Today's topic, the magic of editing. This episode of Awkward Anthems is brought to you by me as an 11-year-old child. Enjoy the cringe. Do you like Game Boy? Well, don't we all? Whenever I'm bored, I just turn on the switch and all my dreams come to life. Game Boy, get it at your nearest Walmart. When I was an awkward child and not yet an awkward adult, my parents upgraded the family camcorder and gifted me the old one. It was this giant monstrosity that recorded directly to VHS tape, thus making it possible for me to not only document the cringe, but preserve it forever. All right, we're back on Angel and Live. It is March 31st, 1996. We have an update on the name of the book back. I was hooked immediately. I have always loved the art and the magic of storytelling. I think being able to take someone on a journey and to guide their attention and to evoke emotion is the coolest superpower ever. But it wasn't until high school that I was introduced to the world of nonlinear editing. And for those of you unfamiliar with the jargon, let me give you the Cliff Notes version. I promise I'll make it pretty with graphics. So back in the olden days, before everything was digitized and easily accessible, cutting together film quite literally involved the physical act of cutting or splicing. And they had to do this in a predetermined sequence from start to finish. That was what we called linear editing. But the industry standard changed with the evolution of technology and the emergence of what we now call nonlinear editing, a process by which you could afford to screw up because once your material is logged into a computer and stored digitally, you have the freedom of an empty canvas to paint any picture you want. You can copy things, paste things, retime things, make the ending your beginning if you want. Sky's the limit. It's like a digital playground that allows you to work non-destructively. And as a storyteller, the freedom that gives you is immense because now we can build something from nothing. You can tell a story and craft a performance that didn't even exist on the day that you filmed it, or at least not as originally intended. You can add sound effects and music to set a certain tone. And with a little button pushing, you have the power to convey a whole range of emotional expression. You're giving the audience psychological cues that universally we all respond to. Let me demonstrate what I mean. I'm gonna run through a totally fake scene that has nothing to do with anything, and I just want you to pay attention to anything that arises emotionally for you. And if you feel nothing, that's okay. I mean, some of us are a little dead inside. But I just want to illustrate a point. So let's get to it. What is it about eggnog? What is it about eggnog? I'm sorry. I'll fix this. That was so bad. Let me try that again. What is it about eggnog? What is it about eggnog? I'm sorry. I'll fix this. Oh my God, don't look at me. Now after that Oscar worthy performance, you're probably wondering what's the difference between good editing and great editing. Great editors understand one thing really well. A beat. Now I'm not talking about a musical beat, although that definitely factors in. And those of you that are musicians, this concept is probably second nature for you. You can easily make the transition from music production to video production because so many of the same principles apply. But I'm not talking about a musical beat. I'm talking about an emotional beat. It's the perfectly timed fart. <laughs> It's the pause that lingers just long enough to convey disappointment or to convey understanding. You would be surprised at how different of a reaction you would get from just trimming something by like two frames. Those two frames might not be noticed by the audience, but they will be felt. And so as an editor, I'm always checking in with myself. How does this make me feel? Am I kind of tickled by the absurdity of it? 
Are my eyes glazing over? If I'm bored, you're gonna be bored too. If I'm feeling impatient from watching a poorly made tutorial, of which there are way too many on this platform, and I think to myself, come on, get to the point, get to the point, get to the point, that is an issue that can be very easily corrected at the post-production stage. But as a creator, if you don't notice the problem, then you're not gonna be inclined to fix it. And so having a deep respect for your audience and their attention is paramount, especially in a world with apps like TikTok that practically mandate that you get in very quickly, make your point, and get out. I mean, nobody's sticking around unless you're giving them a compelling reason to stay. By the way, I was tossing around this idea of starting a series called Awkward Audit, where I review videos submitted by you for critique. I thought it might be a fun way for me to give back, but also as a way to share knowledge that other creators can apply to their own productions. So if that's something that would be of interest to you, please let me know in the comments. Back to farts. So great editing at its core is really just very strategic pacing. It's tension and release. It's teeing up the ball so you can knock it out of the park. And you're welcome for that sports analogy. I don't even really like sports. What we're doing as editors is really building emotional crescendos. And I think the best example of this in action are movie trailers. If you've ever watched your favorite movie trailer, you are basically getting a crash course in how to effectively apply all of these concepts in under three minutes. In a world where people want to know stuff, one woman will awkwardly lead the way. But first, she has to leave her house. Leave my house? Not happening. <laughs> Not happening. Did I stutter? Not happening. In theaters this fall. But there's another hallmark of great editing. Great editing cleverly flies under the radar. When done well, it should be almost invisible. Bad editing calls way too much attention to itself, and for all the wrong reasons, some of which might include poorly processed audio quality, a lack of continuity in camera angles and lighting, using this font, and the gratuitous use of chaotic, whiplashy movement that merely serves to hold your attention for two more seconds and serves no other purpose beyond that. I see this a lot in YouTube videos, and I don't know if it's just a personal preference, but I feel like as a storyteller, Every move you make should have purpose. If what you're doing is not serving the narrative or making a point or emphasizing a point, then it's sort of the dietary equivalent of like fruit stripes gum. It might taste good for a second, but it doesn't last long and it's nutritionally empty. I'm sure you've heard the saying, we'll fix it in post. And to some degree you can, but there are some things that you can't fix. You can't fix overexposed footage or really bad sound on a windy day or an acting performance that falls so flat that the best you can do is lean into the between takes footage where they don't even know the camera's still rolling. And then you just rely on that when you need a genuine reaction to something that doesn't feel forced. Yeah, it's a little manipulative, but with the right music and pacing, you can make even boredom look like sincere contemplation. That is the magic of editing. The magic of editing. Thank you so much for watching Awkward Anthems and stick around because in the next video, we're gonna get a little more technical and a lot more creative with the exciting world of motion graphics. Until next time, awkward and out. <laughs> In a world where people want to know stuff, one woman will awkwardly lead the way. I'm getting tired. <laughs>